Paul is with us from Capitol Hill. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Glad to be with you. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Snowden. Do you think he's a hero or a traitor? I think it's sort of a side point. I think the real point is that the Bill of Rights are being violated, our privacy is being violated, and really no government should do this, and we need to obey the rules. So we're going to try to hold the president accountable and say, look, okay. we don't want the government following us around every day. But, but do you agree with what he did, whether there is a title to what he did or not? Do you agree? Did he do the right thing? Do you support him? You know, I think it's a complicated issue. I think when people choose civil disobedience, they're at their wit's end and think there's no other choice. We've had great civil disobedience in our history. Sometimes they turn out that we laud them. At other times we say, oh, they went too far. I personally am trying to work within the law and change the law. I think that's what my job is. And I think we can challenge the president on this, particularly his hypocrisy. I'm reserving judgment on, on you know, Mr. Snowden, but I think he felt like this was something so wrong billions of phone records being looked through and you have to realize by looking at your phone records they can actually track your movements all day long so I've been jokingly saying I'm leaving my phone at home when I go to Republican leadership meetings because the president doesn't need to know where I am all day long. Uh, Senator Paul the polls show that a lot of Americans seem to be okay with what the government is doing to monitor terrorist threats even if it invades on privacy what do you say about that to monitor or investigate terrorist threats what do you say? I don't think it's true. And actually, if people knew the extent of what can happen, for example, I purchase most of my daily uh, needs on my Visa card. My whole life is digitalized. You can tell whether I go to a psychiatrist, whether I gamble, whether I read conservative magazines, whether I drink, whether I smoke. Your government has no right to this knowledge unless you're accused of a crime, unless there's probable cause. But, so Senator, I think there's if you no told proof people, that the government is monitoring that and, and, and using that information. They need a Currently, in order to find out where you're shopping and where you're using your credit card. Actually, you're actually you're wrong. There's no proof that they're actually doing it, but we do know that third-party records for the last 30, 40 years have not been sufficiently protected by the Fourth Amendment. We've had an exclusion. We say that when you give up your records to a bank, that you're actually giving up your right to privacy. I disagree with those court cases. Some of the court cases need to be reversed. It's not just President Obama, it's President Bush, and all of the presidents probably for the last four or five presidents. But I think the American people are fed up with it now that more and more of our lives are online and digitalized. We don't want the government looking at our entire life. Senator, this is an important issue. All three branches of government have approved this surveillance. Um, obviously, it's carried out by the executive branch. Congress approved it. The courts have approved it. The Congress was briefed 22 times on this PRISM surveillance program between o October 2011 and December 2012. Did you attend any of those briefings? Most of these are for the Intelligence Committee, so I wouldn't have been invited. But I would say just because Congress approved it doesn't make it right. Congress has about a 10% approval rating, so I think we're often doing things that the public doesn't approve of. But in last, year we appro last year we approved of indefinite detention, where an American citizen can be detained without charge or trial for the rest of their life and sent to Guantanamo Bay. I think that's wrong whether the president signed it or not. It's also hypocritical because the president, when he was a senator, was much more in favor of defending civil liberties. In press accounts, though, today, it says there was an invitation in 2011 for all senators, all lawmakers, to view this classified report on what's going on. You could also ask for a briefing. Did you go to that? Why not? Why only now raise these concerns? Congress was briefed been, on this. I've, I've, I've been raising these for over a year. You can look back at a speech I gave in Las Vegas last year. I have attended briefings on this, so I was aware of it. The interesting thing is, is that I was unable to talk about it. So was Senator Wyden. They put a gag rule on us. They put a gag rule on those who are investigated. The most ridiculous thing I hear from people of this persuasion is politicians saying, oh, nobody was complaining. Well, you can't complain because they put you in jail if you complain, or they don't tell you if they're investigating you. We had 8 million suspicious activity reports from banks issued, but you're not allowed to complain because nobody knows you're being investigated. Uh -huh. I think Americans don't want this surveillance state. Okay, uh, beyond that, you mentioned civil disobedience, whether you think about Mahatma Gandhi or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They were people who re said they were breaking the law, but were prepared to go to jail and presented themselves for arrest. Uh, should Mr. Snowden, in the great tradition of civil disobedience, step forward and present himself uh, to be tried and, and uh, judged by the judicial system? 
You know, I can't make that decision for him. He's chosen exile, which is a pretty significant thing to have to leave your family and your country. But what I would say is that the issue really is about privacy, right to privacy, and whether the president's a hypocrite for wanting to look at all of our phone records all of the time. And I